they will say she died on her birthday. She's an Obanje. Mm. How can she die on her birthday? You know, you know, people must always have something to say. By the end of the day, I didn't die. I'm here. I'm strong. My baby is strong. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Constance. If you are seeing this beautiful show for the first time, you are welcome. Please click on the subscribe button and subscribe. And if you are a returning subscriber, you are most welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for always bringing out time to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am a Nigerian YouTuber based here in Dakar, Senegal. And on this channel, I'll be taking you guys on family, lifestyle, food, vlogs, story times, and so many other interesting activities. Just stay tuned on this channel and don't go anywhere. So guys, as you can see from the title, I want to tell you guys my story. It's actually a sad one, you know. But then again, I want to share it with you guys. So in 2017 stroke 2018, I found out that I was pregnant. So during my first trimester, we went for a scan and I was told I was carrying twin. Yeah, we were so happy and excited about this. You know, the love I have for twins is something I can't describe. So you guys cannot imagine how happy I was when I knew I was carrying twin in my tummy. So during my second trimester, we now went for the second scan to identify their sex. So when we got there now, after the scan, the doctor said I was carrying twin that they are both girls, you know? I was super excited about it again, you know? I had, I already had them three boys and one girl, which is four. So having two more girls is something that made me so happy. So my husband asked him, are you sure? He now said, once he has seen it, he has seen it, that he doesn't make mistake. You know, you can imagine that as if he is God. So during the period I was carrying my pregnancy, I couldn't wait for the babies to arrive, you know? two girls ah i was so happy you know then i even had my photo shoot you know and because i was told they were both girls you know i had to buy machine outfit for my girls you know did my photo shoot with them i was so happy So guys as you can see from the pictures you can see how happy and excited i was waiting for my baby girls to arrive so then after then i now organized a baby shower i invited my close friends and acquaintance they all came for the shower we had a wonderful baby shower you know two girls coming and all that we also did the um, sex reveal and all that So, you know, during my pregnancy, I was going for my antenatals, you know, taking care of myself and the babies to make sure they are fine. Then, 
when i was nine months old and um, ready for delivery you know i go for exercises you know walking and everything and then my mom was already around for her omugo so on that fateful day that was on the 4th of october 2018 that was my birthday and that very day also was the day my fourth baby which was my last baby then was to start school you know so that morning i saw signs and labor pains that i felt i was as in i knew i was going to have my baby that day because i, I already saw signs of um con contraction so i now told my mom we now packed my bag although my, my bag my bag was already packed so i had to get everything set so i didn't tell my husband so we now went to my baby's school You know, that very day was the day my children were resuming school, so they all went to school with us that very day. So when we went to the school, my husband, my husband asked me to go and pay for our house rent, but the agency was very close to my children's school. So because I knew I was in labor, I was having this contraction, I had to trek to the place with my mom. So when we got there, we finished our business with them, we then came back to the school. So the labor pains were increasing, but you know, I intentionally had to go there on foot so I could maybe have a little exercise that morning. So when I got to the school now, my husband was almost through with the kids. And I said, ah, let's take me to the hospital. It's like, I'm having labor, I'm having contraction. And I said, am I serious? And I said, ah, let's go home and get the bag. And I said, no, the bag, was already, the bag is already in the booth. I was like, wow, how come? I said, don't worry, let's go to the hospital. So when we got to the hospital now, that was around um, after 11 to 12. So they did not now check me and all that. They were like, I'm in labor. That I, I was soon put to bed. So they now asked me to be walking around the hospital. So when it was around almost um, 2.30 to 3 p.m. So the labor now started severely. So I was now rushed into the theater. So, you know, normal, normal. And I was asked to push and all that. So when I pushed the first one, my, my, my baby came out. And um, to my great surprise, they said it was a male child. You know, doctor giving you assurance that he's very sure once he has seen, he has seen. And I was told the first child that came out was a boy. I was surprised. So then, I was now asked to push for the second baby to come out. So after resting now, the baby refused to come down. She now hung on my chest, you understand? I couldn't understand what was happening. So the next thing I did was I started singing. I was like, I, I, started singing, I sang this song. I was like, I'm a divine project. He will never abandon me. I'm a divine project. He will never abandon me. I'm a divine project. He will never abandon me until he finishes contract in my life. That was the song I sang like, I sang like twice. But the baby refused to calm down. Then my mom, my mom was with me. I was like, Mommy, I'm tired. She was like, Please, oh, don't be tired. Don't be tired. So I'm tired. I cannot push again. It's not coming down. So the doctors and nurse now checked me and was, they was like, they, Maybe they noticed something was critical and all that. So they now called my husband to go and register for an ambulance that I needed to be rushed to another hospital immediately. 
So he now went to go get the ambulance now. So I You know, in life, we can't really predict our future, you understand? I never imagined I would one day find myself in an ambulance, you understand? But look at what happened. I was in an ambulance. While we were on our way to the hospital, I didn't know where I was. All I knew is that I was lying down with my side, yeah, by the side. So all I kept saying in that, in that ambulance was, let the weak say, I am strong, I am strong, I will not die. Let the weak say, I am strong, I am strong, I will not die. That was what I kept saying, you know, until we got to the hospital. So when we got to the hospital, they then brought a wish here and asked me to enter. So my husband, my husband was like, I should enter. I should enter the wish here. Then I realized on my body, we were paralyzed. As in, I couldn't move my leg. I couldn't move my hand. I was like, I can't enter. My husband, my husband was surprised. I was like, how? I, should just, I said, I can't move my body. As in, I was completely paralyzed from my head to toe. So they then had to carry me into the wish here and now took me to their uh, checking room so when i got there they now laid me down they, they now this can on my tummy and all that placed me on drip and all that before i knew what was happening i was laid on the bed i was asked to stretch my hands then i now stretched my hands they now injected some drug to me as in, i don't know what was happening to me but i knew i kind of understood what was happening but i really i don't really i can't really say what was happening to me then the next thing i heard was they now placed something on my nose i was asking me to breathe fast breathe, as in that was what i was doing I, I didn't know where I was again. So, so later in the midnight, I now woke up. I now looked around as in, I didn't know where I was and there was nobody in the room. So I now turned my right and I now saw my mom. I was like, mommy, can you know her? She was like, I should know what I should just take her, I should just take her, I should sleep. I didn't know what was happening. Then I, I, I wanted to stand up and I felt a sharp pain down my waist. And, but then the doctor and came and said I should sleep, I shouldn't worry, I'll, I'll be fine. So I now slept now. In the morning, I've not seen my baby so. In the morning now, the nun came and took me upstairs. Because we, I was in, initially in the theater. So in the morning, I was not taken to my ward there. I was lying down. My mom and husband was not there yet. So there was nobody to talk to or ask questions. And my phones were not with me. They still my phone. You understand? So I couldn't even make a call. I was just... I don't know, I can't explain how I was feeling that moment. I had to wait, 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 wait. I waited though. The nurse, the nurse now came with one of my baby, you know. She now placed him on the baby's bed. So Anna asked her, what sex is that? She now said, male. Then, the thing is, I kind of had that feeling that something was wrong. Because me, I do have this strong feeling whenever something is wrong, you understand? So I was like, ah, this is me. I don't mean I have two boys. That is not possible. So I just like, because the baby, I was, I was lying down, you know, I, I just had a, a, a CS, so I, I couldn't stand up. So I, all I did was just to wait patiently for my husband and mom to arrive. And also with my phone, because I can't even call them. So I waited though, until they later came. Then I was already having this strong feeling that my, my daughter is no more older, or maybe I lost one of my child. So I waited for them, I waited. I was just feeling unease. So when they came now, according to my mom, my husband had to stay behind her. You know, he was scared or should I say, he didn't know how to bring the news to me. He was he was in pain, you know. So when my mom now came in, I was like, that since I've been here, that what, where, what happened? Where's my phone? And they only brought one baby. Where is the other baby? She didn't want to say anything. I said, oh, she's dead. You don't want to tell me. Is my baby dead? She now said, yes, I should just take her. At least we have one here.
Whenever I have this feeling that something is wrong, I find it difficult to cry out, you understand? So I was just looking, looking, looking everywhere. Ah, God. So I lost my baby girl, you know? The thing is, I already had four, three boys, you know? Plus this one, making it four boys and one girl. So that girl was something I needed most, you know? But she left. Well, the thing is, I felt she took my place, you know? I felt, or I feel, she took my place, you know, to stay and take care of her siblings. Because this situation surrounding her death is so mysterious. I don't know if maybe they actually came for my life and she has to replace and then um, take my place. I don't know. But the thing is, the, re the only reason why I endured her death was I felt she took my place and all that. So the next morning, that very day, she was buried. So that was how I lost her. But you know, the thing is, after she died, you know, people would talk. The thing, the things I started hearing was um, that why didn't I go to a better hospital, or um, why um, didn't I have a CS? The thing is, I already had four kids. Number one. Then number two is that I have been going for my antenatals, doing scanning and all that. The gynecologist in charge of my antenatal never for one day suggested I should have a CS. You know, they felt I can, I can have a normal delivery since I only had four, four kids. So if they had suggested I should go for a CS and I refused and then this happened, then I would say it's my fault, you know. But they never suggested any CS or anything related to it because they felt... But I was always going for scanning and they noticed that my babies were okay and the, the positions were okay. You said so many things, but at the end of the day, because they are not God, and at the end of the day, I feel whatever that has happened then, God has a reason for it. So I was not even moved out with all the gossip and the things I heard after my delivery. Telling me I would have gone for a CS or I would have um, gone to a bigger hospital. The hospital where I had my baby, where the hospital where people come to have their babies, and that was where I had my four children. So I didn't see anything wrong with me going to have my baby in that hospital. You understand? I don't know if the people will have something to say in any situation. Not my God, you know? I believe whatever that happens in life, God has a reason for it. And before it happens, God already knows. So there was no way I blamed myself or my husband or the hospital. You know, sir? I felt that was destined to happen. So I just had only my baby boy that decided to stay alive for me. And um, the way my husband loved that boy so much, I think, the way he was so conscious of that baby, as if that was his only child or that was his first child, he would never hear him cry. And even in the midnight, while I was with him and my mom, he was not in that room with us. Once he hears him crying, he just run and come. What is it? Why is he crying? I said, he was so in love with that baby. I don't know why. Then I was now that he's dead. I was like, maybe he felt he had short time to stay with him, so he should show him all the love that he needs. I don't know. The love he had for my baby boy was excess. You know, while I was pregnant, we now decided to choose name for our baby girls. So he now said I should name one that he was going to name one. So I now named the one Chimwanya Annabelle. So he now said he was going to name the other one Heavenly and um, Odira Achukuma. You understand? And I said Odira Achukuma doesn't sound feminine to me, that this is a masculine name, that this is a male child's name. And I said, but he likes the name. That he has a friend that bears this thing, that he's in love with this name, that he wants his child to bear this name. I said, Odira Chukuma is too gross, as in, it's not, it's not feminine at all. And I said, okay, should we do it, Odira Chima? <laughs> I said, so you just insist on having this name for your child? And I said, yes, that he loves the name so much that he wants her to bear Odira Chima. So when I had the baby now, and he now turns out to be, the first one now turns out to be a boy, the excitement they had then, you know, I don't know, maybe he felt, maybe, ah, yeah, thank God though, I'm now going to name my other Achukuma the way I wanted and all that. 
So he was happy and he loved that boy so much while he was alive. The eight months period he stayed with him was all love, as in as if he was the only child he had. So after eight months of my delivery and having just the baby boy being alive, my husband now died, you know. So guys, you can imagine within the space of one year, I lost a girl and a husband, you know, leaving me with five children to take care of. The, the thing is, people say I am strong, I am strong. Yeah, I try to be strong, you know. This pain is something that has been, how would I even speak the English self? Is a growth in my heart. It's something I don't know when it's going to heal. You know, some days ago, someone was telling me ah, that I am strong, girl, that she can't bear what I'm bearing. I was like, do I really have choice? That I really have to be strong? That I have five children, you understand? And they are still very small. So if I should never say, start thinking now or fall into depression now or something happens to me, what will happen to those innocent kids, you understand? So to me, I feel I have no choice but to be strong for those kids. You know, if I, if I didn't have those children, to me, believe me when I say dying will be my best option, as in I feel this life is so meaningless to me. The, the very day I lost my one was the day I lost the meaning of, of my existence, you know? So I feel if they were not in the picture, I don't think I'll have the, any, any reason to be alive. So the only reason I'm alive now and the only reason I try to survive, the only reason I try to be strong is these children that he left behind for me. So at the end of the day, this is my story. So that my twin baby boy of then is now two years plus. Yeah, he's now schooling. He's fine and healthy. I couldn't thank God enough for his life, you know, because even that very day I had him. I, I don't think he even cried out. He didn't cry when I had him and he was weak, you understand? But he struggled to stay alive for me, you understand? So me losing the daughter and him being alive was my consolation. I was so happy he stayed for me, at least after a nine months journey, you know? You can imagine losing the two of them or losing my own life. I thank God that I'm alive, he's alive. Yeah, my daughter is no more. At the end of the day, we can't question God. So this is my story. This was how it all happened. And that very day was my birthday, yeah. And my friends were all making posts for me, you know, my birthday post, wishing me happy birthdays, birthday. And although they were calling my line, it wasn't going through because it was switched off. And I have this um, group of friends that we have a group chat, you understand? So they came that morning. I was like, this one person hasn't made a post on her birthday. What's up? Is she in the delivery room? Because they know I was every pregnant and I was almost due for delivery. So they couldn't place their hand on what was happening. They, but they didn't hear from me. So they made a post for me, wishing me happy birthday and all that. Next day, so, and I went to the group chat and told them that I'm fine. That I had my baby yesterday. That um, I had the two of them, but I lost two one. I lost the female child and all that. You know, when a good news comes with a bad news, the spirit is not always high, you understand? So they were happy for me. They were like, in all things, we should thank God. Since I'm alive, that is the most important thing. So that was how it happened. You know, the thing is, that was my birthday. And what happened to me? Guys, believe me when I say, what happened to me? If it should happen to about 100 women, five will survive. I'm telling you. So what happened to me? Something one can easily survive. But at the end of the day, God kept me alive. I survived it. I'm alive today. I'm here, healthy, strong for my children. You know, if I had died that day, they will say she died on her birthday. She's on a one day. Mm, how can she die on her birthday? You know, you know, people must always have something to say. Well, end of the day, I didn't die. I'm here. I'm strong. My baby is strong. And then we are now twin. We know we celebrate our birthdays every 4th of October. So, guys, this is my story. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please, at the end of this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and please subscribe all right guys see you in my next video bye